Believe it or not, body weight training rivals free weights when it comes to muscle and strength. However, you want to use this one tool, a suspension trainer. Your body and a suspension trainer, and you can rival your friends with muscle and strength gains who use free weights. It's that darn effective. Uh, one of my favorite tools yeah. that people can use uh, in the gym. Uh, you, you know, you could almost make the case, and I know there's definitely people that are hardcore into body weight training and suspension trainers that would probably definitely make the case that it's better in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. I think for longevity, you're probably right. Yes. Yeah, oh, obviously, if you're competing in a bodybuilding show or a powerlifting show, yeah. suspension trainers are not going to be your your go to tool in sure. comparison to free weights, right, and barbells. Uh, but for longevity, overall joint health, range of motion, strength, there's like natural limiters there, right? And in order to be able to pull a lot of these moves off, you have to get a lot of that stability and a lot of that uh, control. <laughs> element where you know it, it really takes into account your joints um strength and health which yeah. i think that you know we can kind of bypass it a lot with weights uh and move you know beyond our natural limits well there's two there's two types of people that need to hear uh, this message one is the person that either doesn't have access to a gym doesn't want to go to a gym has limited space and so they're like okay how can i get the best strength building muscle building metabolism boosting effects without too much equipment, without too much space, without going to the gym. The second person, and this is also very important, is the person that has access to all these different tools, free weights, machines, body weight, bands, in which case there's a there's benefit to using all of those things. And suspension trainers have unique benefits present that you don't find in those other tools. So if you primarily work out in the gym with free weights and machines, you're missing out by not using a suspension trainer. The other one's obvious, right? I don't have a gym. What's the best tool? And I'll say mm -hmm. this, according to, you know, just for that, it's the best non-free weight, non-machine tool you could use for just pure strength and muscle. I can't think of a better hey, tool. So hey, the only way you can really intensify a lot of these body weight exercises uh, uh, effectively. Right. Uh, otherwise, you have to get like way too creative and, and unnatural and assist you in ones that are really really challenging that you couldn't do right so right. for everything from uh a, a beginner to someone who's super advanced yeah. you can utilize this tool for you know we don't actually talk about this a lot uh <laughs> maybe it's because for social media reasons it's not sexy you know like there's no like suspension trainer prs going around viral you know what i'm saying or check out this cool i gained 10 pounds so now yeah. i have a PR. yeah because I, I was thinking about you know what shame there on aren't. me for not probably sharing this more and i don't know where you used to sal i see your workouts a lot so i don't know if you are as much i don't or you justin but i i use my suspension trainer weekly yeah mm -hmm. a week yeah. does not go like maybe a workout goes by where maybe that day I didn't use it, but I use, mine is in my garage. It is always, I don't detach it because I use it literally every single week I use it. Well, there's similar benefits that I, I receive from uh, doing the suspension training uh, devices as doing mobility drills is for me, it's yes. really like I can, I can add just enough tension um, and, and be able to regulate that based off of where I am in terms of the anchor and my foot position. And so I can, I can get like a nice moderate kind of intensity while really kind of feeling my way through these movements, which really I feel the benefit uh, around my joints. Look, it, it, there's, here's what's unique to suspension trainers. You kind of mentioned to Adam, it's the only tool that exists for strength training that is both appropriate for beginners and for intermediate and for super advanced without having to add anything. Yeah. Now, free weights are appropriate for everybody as well, but you have to add weight or take weight off. The same suspension trainer, the same one can be used by a complete deconditioned beginner and also the super advanced strength athlete. And someone might be wondering, well, how? Angles. You change the angles. You change the leverage. This is the beauty uh, of a suspension trainer. And this is why it's, it's one of the top tools that someone can use. And it's an inexpensive tool and it doesn't take up a lot of, in fact, you have a doorway, you have a gym. Mm -hmm. with a suspension trainer and you could build a phenomenally impressive physique. Uh, and it doesn't matter what body part you're training either. That's the other thing about certain tools. They work great for some body parts, not so much for others. You can train your entire body with a suspension trainer with in, like a wide degree of intensity. Do you know that the the new one comes with the, the door 
one too. The one that we have now that we sell. Oh yeah. Our old one didn't have that. Oh, okay. I don't know if you know so that. Now we have an anchor piece that you can wedge in the that door. Wedge in the door. Did you know that? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I so recently I ordered it, but I didn't my know brother that. Wait, my brother was at my house. It was just like a couple of weeks ago, uh, and he came he came by and was talking about uh, and he doesn't have a lot of means, right? So he's like really wanting to get back in his train. I said, dude, why don't you use the suspension trainer? He's like, oh yeah. I said, I have a program. I'll set you all up. I said, in fact, you know what? So you do, so you make sure you do it. Just take mine. I said, I have another one in the studio. I have the original one that we originally had, and I got the new one out. I pulled it all out. I'm like, oh, this is cool. It it actually comes with an accessory to wedge in the door too. Oh, perfect. So it not only has the anchor to a tree to a pull up bar, but then also Anything the stable, the basically. door wedge. And to give an example of what you were talking about, how you could take uh, the most deconditioned beginner to all the way the super advanced. Uh, I think of like the push up, right? I remember having clients so deconditioned that I would have them go to a wall. Yeah, wall push up. And they would and they would they would just push their body weight away from the wall. Imagine that they're standing up, they just kind of let their right. their body weight fall. And, they, and that was challenging. Yeah. So you can do that exact same movement, but even better because with the with the suspension trainer, you'll actually take it all the way deep. Yeah. Where they, they're going in your face on the wall. Yeah, you get there right here where you can go all the way deep so you get a full range of motion, but standing up. And then as you move your feet back, it gets harder, harder, harder to where you eventually go to the place where the, the suspension trainer is hanging straight down and you do a reverse push up on there where it's all in stable on both sides. And, and you're hanging your feet up on something. Yeah. Super difficult. Super challenging. It's, uh, again, it, it, by the way, it, this tool has existed uh, for a long time. Maybe not in the commercial way that we have them now, but Olympic rings is what it was based off of. Mm -hmm. And those have been used in uh, comp well for training for a long time. But in the Olympics, I believe the first time uh, that it was used was in men's gymnastics. I want to say in 1900. I looked it up earlier. And it was a way to display upper body strength. And it still is today. To this day, um, it's one of the greatest displays of upper body it's a strength. very impressive feat of strength. It's to see a, a gymnast do like an iron cross or yeah. you know, a, a, you know, position up in the rings. So that's kind of the origin of them. Um, but they're such valuable tools. And what we're going to go over today are just some tips, how to use them, and then best exercises. What are the best exercises per body part? For beginners, although I will say this, everything that we're going to list, if you change the angle, it goes from a beginner exercise to a super advanced exercise. Uh, so I think we should go through the body parts and kind of talk about yeah, yeah, no, some definitely. of our favorites. I mean, that's right? these are just our favorites, but I mean, there's there's so many exercises that you can. Um, and as a trainer, like another reason why I love this uh, tool is I remember one of the more challenging things was uh, understanding how to regress and progress exercises. And even when you have things <clears> like <throat> free weights and a, and a huge gym with all these great tools, uh, when you're first learning how to do this, like that sometimes challenges like, oh, this person can't do a squat. Like, what do I go do? Yeah. Like, and like trying to figure out what is the ideal regression to that exercise when they can't do it or, oh my God, that was way too easy for them. How do I progress this? Is it just add weight? Is that all I do? Just add weight all the time? This tool is so easy to figure that piece out for the average person. It's almost intuitive. It's very intuitive. Yeah. That's what I love about it. So. Yeah. All right. Today's program giveaway is MAPS suspension because that's what we talk about today is suspension training. If you're interested, you have to leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Everybody else, MAPS suspension is half off. That's right. Half off right now because of this episode. If you're interested... Click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. All right, so let's start with chest. Uh, obviously, the push-up has got to be there. The unique thing about a suspension trainer push-up is the potential, and I say potential because you want to train in an appropriate range of motion, a range of motion that you own, that you have control over, okay? Because the potential for the range of motion, the push-up with the suspension trainer is rivaled by almost no other exercise. Like, I can't think of another push-up or press variation, maybe dumbbells, but uh, boy, the, the range of motion you can get, you can get so deep with the push up. So if you're advanced, you could put your feet up, create your, put yourself in a horizontal position mm -hmm. and challenge the depth. And studies show that the stretch position builds the most muscle. And if you challenge range of motion, it's a novel stimulus. Now, somebody who's a beginner, what you said, Adam, you have them stand almost straight up or slightly slanted and do their push up. And Always work with what you can control with a suspension trainer because the stability is a big component. Right. You'll find if you're too shaky or whatever, you might need to make it a little And easier. that little bit of instability, so you get a little bit of a shift left to right that you have to account for, 
um, which actually helps even to further engage the core. And oh, so it's yeah. something that you just can't deny. So this is like, this is a great tool for trainers and coaches as well. Like when we're teaching pushups and just regular pushups on the ground, you always want to have that good form. You want to have that, those hips locked in place. You want to have that, you know, stomach, that core drawn in and everything kind of braced and controlled. Cause you see a lot of sloppy pushups where people will have arches in their back and, yes. you know, and they'll kind of, uh, work their way through it. <clears throat> but this is this is a great one to really stress uh, the important things that need to be stressed, which is good form and being able to maintain and brace, uh, you know, in a nice firm uh, uh, back position. That was one of the best things that the you know stability ball and functional quote unquote training movement that happened in like the late yeah. '90s, early 2000s. What came of that? I stole a lot of things from that, and still to this day, I've kept that. Like, there's a video, one of the viral YouTube videos I did, where you see me doing a split stance for a bicep curl, and said this is the only way you should do bicep right. curls, and of course, caught all kinds of controversy and stuff like that. But what what I figured out, and what the suspension trainer provides for all movements, is that instability. And what I found was coaching a client while they're doing a new exercise they've never done to, you know, draw in their TVA, you know, yeah. but yet breathe <laughs> normally and also do this exercise that you're not very familiar with is a lot for them to think. And a lot of times there's all this breakdown, put them in an unstable environment and naturally the body organizes itself and the core activates to stabilize the spine. Yeah. It was like a really cool, clever way to get my client to train the core and learn to activate it through these movements while not having to really focus on it so much. That's what I loved about instability type of training and the suspension trainer provides that for all movements. Now, a couple keys with this is one, as you go down the push up, you come up on your toes. So your feet aren't going to stay flat. I've seen people have challenges with that because mm -hmm. of lack of ankle mobility. You don't need to have crazy ankle mobility <laughs> to do this. You're on your toes. And two is bracing the court. You don't want an over arch in the low back. So what I like to tell people to do is get into position and then you don't want to break at the hips. Yeah, arch the back and then tuck the tailbone and then go somewhere in the middle and brace the core. And that's probably the right position. You want to be nice and flat as you go down. You don't want to have this butt sticking out. Dude, and there's so position. many progressions to this. It's so oh, great. Like, yeah. I mean, it, you guys even mentioned like anchor push ups is something yep. like a unique uh, feature that the suspension trainer provides where you can actually have one pressing and one flying at I the love same that. time. One of my favorite exercises. And so you get the benefit of both. Love that. All right, for the back. Uh, supine rows. This is uh, actually one of my favorite back exercises, period. It's so much better than a supine row on a barbell or a Smith machine. The range of motion, again, with the handles is incredible. The key here is to make sure that your feet aren't going to slide. Uh, so make sure you have good traction or something that you're putting your feet up against. But man, uh, really squeeze the shoulder blades down and back and pull your chest up as you pull back. Don't just pull the handlebars back. Yeah, I love to use this also uh, for priming. You know, it's a we always talk about the benefits of of rowing for the upper back. Like, and again, you can progress this so far. I've progressed this before, where you go all the way to where your feet are up on the wall. Yes, and so yeah. you're actually suspended in air and then rowing your entire. That's gnarly. Well, I especially love this because of that isometric extension, which is something that's like people don't realize how beneficial that is mm -hmm. in terms of like uh, if you have any kind of pain or anything hip flexor wise or lower back wise and to be able to address that uh, just while naturally doing a row, uh, you have to maintain in that type of uh, rigidity there in your back by by lifting those hips up and squeezing the glutes yeah. and keeping it nice and, and tight and it's going to help actually alleviate pain uh, that you may experience oh, later. Oh, pulling your body up. Uh, encourages good form versus rowing a barbell when you're bent over, which makes it really hard for people to understand how to pull their shoulder blades back. But when you have someone pull their body up appropriately, they naturally kind of want to stick their chest out. So it's really easy to teach uh, good form. An advanced version, by the way, if you've ever tried a one arm uh, row, uh, supine row with the uh, mm -hmm. with the with the handles, you want to talk about core stability. It sounds like if you, you imagine it, you're like, oh, I could do that. Try it. Yeah. Like it twists your body and you want to be weird <laughs> at the bottom. So you want to use an appropriate angle and really activate the obliques as you're getting that, you know, that back. Activity. Do you know how many extra, just, you're just making me think of like, cause you're, my brain's going like crazy. This is obviously at orange theory. When I worked there, they, their primary thing they use was a suspension trainer. So uh, I already had a bunch of exercises that I use. And then I got introduced to so many more when I was there, which was really cool. Mm -hmm. And the amount of variations that you can do to these exercises, like you bring up the, 
you know, keeping yourself like I would put my hand on my hip and I would do a single yeah. arm row and a fixed mm -hmm. position. But then I do ones where I open completely up and create yeah, and yeah, rotate yeah. with it. And I know yeah. Justin loves that stuff, right? Yeah. Rotational stuff involved into the row and stuff. Like there's a lot of really cool uh, you know, functional twists that you can make too. And I know it's a buzzword mm -hmm. to say it like that, but like for example, like we we lack that good rotational strength. And so training it to be able to do anti-rotation from the way you're talking mm -hmm. about, then incorporating rotation in there. Yep. This is why I these are the reasons why you can make the a case for it being one of the, if not the best tool for longevity for building. I love it. I love to just the off topic a little bit, but uh, it's a straight arm, a straight arm pullover. I think you would call it or yeah. a straight arm pull down. I think they call them supermans. On, it is on. your core and your, and your lats yeah. are going to get blitzed. That is a super advanced exercise. Yeah. Uh, really, really challenging one. In fact, I, I remember the first time I tried it, I almost hurt myself because I underestimated it. Well, and you can do that on your knees and yes. further out. Yes. For, so, I tried so, it off my feet. So I, could the gates. <laughs> so I could take somebody. It's a great example of an extremely difficult for even an advanced lifter to do that for pullovers all the way down to your knees and scoot it out. And now mm -hmm. it becomes really easy for someone who's extremely deconditioned. So another reason why I love Excellent. that. Now, shoulders. Here is a unique exercise for shoulders that you can't really do with almost any other tool. I mean, you can do it with bands, I guess, bands and cables. maybe, yeah. But I love the way that it feels with a suspension trainer because it gives you the right amount of resistance at the hardest part and then the the least amount of resistance at the, at the part where you should have kind of the least amount. So in other words, the strength curve or resistance curve with a suspension trainer seems to match up really well with this exercise. And that's called, these are called Ws. Mm. I was introduced to these by one of you guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's pro it's got to be one of my top three shoulder building, shoulder stabilizing, like healthy for my shoulders right. type of exercise. Yeah, just, just to everything. get that external rotation. I yeah. mean, it's so beneficial to, if you're pressing all the time, which, you know, typically you are, if you're in the gym and you have any kind of regular programming, you're going to be pressing a lot. So to be able to kind of strengthen the rotators and to be able to get that external rotation and, and keep that a part of the mix, um, it's going to benefit all the rest of your lifts uh, of any kind of pressing or, or stabilizing in the shoulder. So the W's is something that not a week goes by. I don't do W's. That's how beneficial. That's what I was going to say. It's yeah. got, it's, not at, a week it's at the top by. of exercises period. Not a week goes by. I do not do W's. And I'll, okay. Let me ask you this. Almost no exercise. I can get a pump with W's like, oh yeah, like nothing, like my yeah. shoulders will inflate uh, yeah. with W's, like not, almost nothing else. I love to start almost all my shoulder workouts with yeah. W's. Yeah. It's you such a, and, or anytime I'm going to do bench press, yeah. I love to, to prime all that. Use so that are face pulls. And so this is like a very, very close, very close second. Yeah. There's also a cool way to do it. I don't know if you've ever done it before. And I don't know if they, if they, if they like some of these names are different, right? For these exercises is where, and you get like in a pike position and you actually shoulder press. Mm. So your hips are up in the air and you're, you're yes. like you're diving down yeah, yeah, yeah. and range of motion again. So just a cool way to do a shoulder press again, because of the st stability component. I think of the, the reasons why I love the Z press so much for clients, it gets similar types of benefits of you can take it through full range of motion. They have to stabilize the shoulder at the top when you press out such a great move on there. Here, I mean, and look, just, just for fun, like if you're an advanced lifter and you get a suspension trainer, look at it and play with it. You there's, there's almost an infinite number of exercises yeah. you can do with it. Like you could do a simulated lateral uh, on a suspension trainer and make it so that the hardest part is the stretch. When do you do a lateral where the hardest part is a stretch? Almost never. There's an old school exercise where you lay on your side and try and kind of mimic it. But try doing that on a suspension trainer. You'll actually get some crazy activation of the delt that you don't, it's hard to mirror. You can get so creative uh, with the suspension trainer that it can add value to almost, like I said, anybody's workout is um, what you'll find. The next uh, body part is biceps. Now here's, this is interesting. This is one of my favorite like strength exercises for the biceps is done with the suspension trainer. It's a body curl. Hmm. You're putting your elbows forward and you're curling your body weight up. Uh, man, I can get my biceps and be careful with this. You can overdo it. I've done it. Yeah. You can really overdo this exercise. I think that's why though is because there's not a lot of traditional machines or exercises done in the free weight room that simulate that position for yeah. the the elbow position for yeah, the, the elbow bicep position. Like. Yeah. There's that one machine that you yeah. see every once in a while that props yeah. it up, which it, it feels most like that. In my opinion, I've talked about before doing, using a lat pull down bar and curling behind my head, kind of like that. Um, but that's really it. That's, and they're kind of like that. It's a different feel doing your body weight and you get an incredible squeeze 
at the top, it's also one of my favorite uh, exercises. Yeah, I sure. go, I start pronated, and then as I curl, I supinate, and then I right. pronate full extension. And it's like, it's insane. It's a well, heavy exercise. And even, and you could go sideways and do one arm yeah. and lean into it and get you know crazy with that. But that, yeah, they're, it's surprising, actually, because you wouldn't think biceps would be, you'd be able to get a good the heaviest, exercise out of this. The heaviest bicep exercises I've ever done with a suspension yeah. trainer. I mean, hands down. It's tension all the way through. It's, it's nasty yeah. tension. You got to be careful again. Uh, but again, if you're a beginner, you're going to stand almost straight up and just focus on the squeeze. Um, triceps, <clears throat> uh, body weight, skull crushers. And this one will, it, like, again, this has to be at the near the top of mass builders for the triceps. This one, you can get a real nice stretch at the bottom, come up, get a hard squeeze. You Not know, to mention the instability. You that's what I was going to say. A fight. The thing know. about triceps that's interesting is a lot of people get caught in the like shortening the rep at the end. You see this with a lot of people. That full squeeze really makes a big difference. With a suspension trainer, it emphasizes it. Like you get that squeeze and you still feel the instability. Uh, your your triceps are going to be on fire. This is the second most used exercise I use as a suspension trainer. I love this, and yeah. I actually made up a, like an, I don't know. I can't take credit for it. I'm sure somebody else has done this. Let's we'll call it the Adam Press. <laughs> but I combine like an overhead extension with the skull crusher because of the stretch that it puts oh. it in. So if you can imagine, I position. Wait, I, I think I do the same thing. I ima Yeah. So you imagine yourself, this would be like your traditional skull crusher with your body weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually let it roll. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I do the back. same thing. Yeah. So it gets a full stretch and then I bring it forward. So people don't know, but that's oh long head activation. Yeah. Totally. So that's why it's like you get to combine two amazing exercises for the triceps in one rolling movement what a great example oh of a beginner God. to intermediate so or to advanced. so a beginner could make themselves almost stand up straight and just focus on this extension if you're super advanced what adam just said i can't that that hits the long head of the tricep like nothing else because the long head also extends the elbow but it also is involved in bringing the humerus down towards the body because of its attachment at the scapula so you're getting uh, you're doing a tricep movement that you you i can't think of it i mean how can you mimic that with the other, closest thing to that mm, like when like people do the free maybe? no you see people and it's not the same but oh, like yeah. people do with the, the skull crusher yes. you've seen people do this before where they take a skull crusher it's bar almost like they're doing a pullover and they'll, like, yeah they'll do the like this, bar, they do a pullover and then a push yeah, but that's yeah. a lot of Old lat, school exercise that's a lot of lat activation i don't feel as much tension on the tri with the body but weight there's a hitch in between yeah this is no hitch it's just exactly all it's all smooth yeah it's all yeah. one smooth movement and it just it does i can feel the full stretch on the tricep and then that full extension i get some of the nastiest tricep pumps from that and i mean at my house i have uh, all the dumbbell barbell stuff i need to do in, in a camber bar for skull crushers i will normally do that instead that's how much i love if you're that movement. if you're quote yeah. unquote advanced and you've never done that exercise before uh, be careful. It will make you sore. Oh, I mean, I get a It'll mass, wreck you. massive pump from that. Yeah. All right, let's talk about legs. Now, here's what I like about suspension training for the lower body. It's one of the few tools where I can get into positions that I couldn't normally do either with just body weight and definitely not with weights. Like for me, for example, a Cossack squat mm -hmm. or a side lunge, really challenging. I just... I don't have great lateral mobility. My hips are kind of interesting with how they move in that way. But with the suspension trainer, I have the ability to assist myself on the way down and help pull myself up. And I can get deeper and focus more on mm -hmm. mobility and range of motion with a suspension trainer with something like a side lunge than I can with uh, almost anything else. I love the suspension trainer for working on ranges of motion for the lower body that you couldn't otherwise perform. That's my it's favorite. fantastic. I that. think that's a great way to to sell it for sure, because that's true. If, if it had a limiting factor is the amount of like, like nothing beats a loaded barbell back squat or right. a deadlift for building right. mass on the legs. But one of the probably most common things that are neglected for lower body is lateral strength and stability. Oh. And again, back to my original point, if I were to make the case for this thing, I'd say it's one of the best tools if not the best tool for strength and mobility and longevity. And that is the reason. I too, I think you're more common than not that people have a hard time with caustic squats for that exact same reason. And so they just discard them. They're like, oh, I can't do them. So don't do them at all. Try doing them with a suspension trainer. You'll be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So for the beginner, I like assisted lunges, assisted side lunges, assisted squats. Now let's get to advanced because you mentioned a heavy barbell squat. Now I'm not going to say that there's an exercise that'll uh, compete head to head with yeah, a barbell a pistol, squat. A body weight pistol squat will get up there. But though. I was going to say you do a body weight pistol squat 
or you do a lying leg curl with one leg in the suspension trainer. Those are nasty. Yeah, dude. I don't know very many with strong your people heels that can and do the those. straps. Oh man, that one you're gonna get your hip bridge like, yeah. and then curl like. Oh no, it's, it's gonna light those oh, hands no. on fire. And then too, you face away from the suspension trainer. You put one foot in. You get a nice Bulgarian split. So squat amazing. That's a little bit instable, and just that little bit of instability like adds a whole nother dimension to the amount of activity your muscles. You know why I like that so. So the back leg, you are getting a full range of motion in the hip flexor of the back leg while you're strengthening. You feel the most amazing stretch. Yes. Yeah. While you're working on the quad, hamstring, and ankle mobility on the front leg. Now, why is that important? If you play sports, you want that. You want great extension of that back leg. You want hip flexors that don't get in your way while you are expressing power and speed. This has to be one of the best exercises for athletics when it comes to you know, getting stronger in the gym and having it translate to the field is exactly that exercise, that uh, that Bulgarian yep. split stance squat. Now, women, there's a, a million and one butt exercises, by the way. Guys, too, those of you interested in developing uh, glutes like Justin, there's all kinds of butt yeah, exercises you could do uh, with a suspension trainer, even the ones that are isolating with the lateral leg exercises and stuff like that. But you can do, you know, straight bridges and glute squeeze, I mean, at the top and uh, this is how I would progress my clients with hip thrusts way before ice I would have skaters, uh, curtsy squats yeah. you could do with that. Like that. A little bit of plyos with the control. Because yeah, a lot of people can't do yeah. that, right? So I don't, it's uh, ice skaters, curtsy squats are not things that I would teach the average person. But with the support of a suspension trainer, I can take somebody who is yeah. relatively you new. Get all over the place. Yeah, that have, that can, I can teach that movement because they have all the assistance from the straps, which. That's a great, th those are great exercises. Typically, it would be something that I would only show to an advanced person, but I could take someone like who's pretty deconditioned and just slow down totally. the, an ice skater or slow down that curtsy squat and use the, the support from that. Totally. Hamstrings, I said leg curls, that's an advanced exercise. That's a tough one. But for the beginner, you could do single leg kind of toe touch type exercises with uh, support from the suspension trainer. In fact, this is one way I would progress a client. I would start them holding on to something solid and then it'd have them hold on. Exactly. I'd have them hold on yep. to one of the handles and it's, it, it's a phenomenal exercise for the hamstrings for a beginner. And you can progress it simply by going lower and lower and lower and then by letting go of the handles. And then if you really want to get crazy, you do the leg curls where your feet or your heels are in the handles. That's a advanced gnarly, uh, it's hand, an it's excellent exercise. One of the hardest yeah. hamstring exercises yeah. uh, you'll ever do. And then for core, I mean, first off, uh, I know this sounds gimmicky, but almost every exercise you do yeah. <laughs> for your upper body is going to activate your core. It is. That's why I made that trainer. point earlier. It this is. is why I think it's one of the best trainer hacks. Uh, when you're trying to teach a client to activate core, you'll find that anytime you do any of these unstable uh, exercises, right? Because you, the, 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 the straps are unstable that it forces people even subconsciously. They don't even have to think a lot of times like, Oh, tighten, brace my core. What they automatically organize themselves that way just yep. to get themselves from not wobbling all over the place. So it, the, all of them are so great for core. Yep. Yeah. So knee tucks are, are deadly, Gnarly. you know, you got pikes, you got, uh, I like to call them body saws. That's like your Yo. ultimate <laughs> advanced move where you're in a plank and basically you can push back towards the anchor and come back yes. forward. So it's a lot like the Superman, but let's just say in a plank. I'll, sure. I'll say this right now, uh, for building the core and for getting like brick abs and obliques that look like slabs of granite, the suspension trainer is nothing better. There, yeah. I can't think of a better tool to train the core and because of the advanced applications it'll light them up like you've never you've never known oh there's nothing like it yeah. i can't think of other exercises that that come close i mean you could do dragon flags and stuff like that on a bench but you have a suspension trainer you want to develop oh, a the, crazy the ass pikes core. the supermans and uh, then the rotational stuff you can do you can hit every bit that you need oh, to oh and you'll so get you, yeah you gotta you blast your core and you'll get a core that's developed the incredible okay so let's talk about uh these we just gave you exercises for every body part um, how would you do this in a routine? Well, you would follow this, what we just gave you. You would do about three sets per exercise and you would do this workout two to three days a week, preferably with a day at least off in between. People ask about reps. Now there's a misconception that you can't do low reps with suspension trainers. It's not true, but go really slow. You can pick a, an angle that's so challenging that you can really only do like one good rep. You can do that. You just do it slow and controlled where it takes you a good seven seconds to go down, seven seconds to come up. And you did a single with a suspension train. So you can go low reps with it. 
nonetheless, most people should aim for about eight to 12 reps and follow this routine about three sets. And I think you're, you're going to be there. Now, if you want more, if you want more exercises, you want more programming, you want more demonstrations, you want a full workout that you could progress through that's phase and everything. We have a program called maps suspension, but, and because we're doing this episode, that program is half off. It's going to be 50 percent off. So you can get the full maps suspension program. I do believe when you enroll in map suspension, you get a code for a uh, discount on the suspension trainer. Is that true, Doug? I believe that's automatically sent to while, you. While supplies last. So it's half off. If you're interested, you go to mapssuspension.com. There's two S's in there. So M-A-P-S and then S-U-S-P-E-N-S-I-O-N.com. And then use the coupon code BEGIN50. That'll give you the 50% off. And again, if you enroll, you'll get a code for half off a suspension trainer, and then you're all set. Look, you can find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. I'm on Instagram at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. 